Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends, and welcome to yet another installment from M&S Creativers as we talk to the women in our spaces. Come with me to the book of Luke. We're going to start at chapter 1 and we'll resume at verse 26 and work our way to verse 28. This is what the King James Version provides as. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail you that are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we reflect upon this message. A brief moment to pray together, my friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of women that are blessed. May you bless them as we interact with them. Bless them as they come in. Bless them as they go out. Bless them in their families. Bless them in their enterprises. Bless them in the social spaces where they pervade and walk through. Bless them even in their hard times. May you set them loose. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, we pray and we ask, Amen. Good friends, as the custom is, we are going to raise our five points. And I want to talk to women as we draw lessons from the life of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The first point I want us to look at is, it is a blessing to conceive. Some women have become of age and they are still not married. If you are married, you are blessed among women. Some have been blessed with marriage and they are yet to have children. And if you have a child, you are blessed among women. May I say you are blessed three times to be a woman, blessed once for having been born a woman, blessed twice for having married, and blessed thrice for having conceived. Let us not take it for granted that we are going to get married and have children. Some have tried to conceive for many years and this has not happened. They have walked in and out of hospital and surgical wards and it has still not paid out. Until God came in and he opened the womb, and the woman conceived. This is a blessing from God, and every child, no matter how they are born or come about, they are a blessing from God. Blessings, blessings upon blessings. Conception is a blessing. It is not just biological. It is not just biological. At point number two, here's the other issue that I want us to take note of. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has just received word from Gabriel who has been dispatched from heaven. And in this message, she has been told, the Lord is with you. You are blessed among women. And secondly, she is also informed, your cousin who is elder to yourself has also been blessed. And it has been six months since she received this news and blessing. And as she hears this message, the Bible says at verse 39 of the same chapter, on the morrow, she rose early in the morning and headed towards Judah to that hill country and got to that particular city and visited her cousin Elizabeth only to get there. And Elizabeth testifies that as soon as you walked in, the baby that is within my womb leapt for joy. He leapt for joy. Now, this is something I want to address to women who are married, address to women who have conceived. Remember this, you still have relatives Visit your relatives. The fact that you are married does not set you so much apart. The fact that you have conceived does not make you so special. The fact that you hear from God through Gabriel himself does not make you a heavenly being. You are still here on earth and take time to visit those that matter to you, especially by blood. Point number three. This is the other thing that I also find uh, as a lesson that we can draw from Mary, the mother of Christ. John chapter 2, the verses 5, we find that there is a wedding at Cana and Jesus has accompanied his mother to that wedding. And unfortunately, as fate would have it, uh, some ingredient runs out. Some particular 
uh, item runs out on the menu and it was the wine. As it ran out, I love the way Jesus speaks to the servants. I, I, I mean, I love the way Mary speaks to the servants concerning Jesus. She says unto them, go to Jesus and whatsoever he says to you, do it. Many mothers will be the first to see good in their children. They will continue to see good in their children even if they are incarcerated and even behind bars. They continue to see something good in them. May I even say hats off to every woman who has seen good in their son and they have encouraged them to start in the right direction. Mary is the first person to prompt Jesus to start the ministry of miracles. And as Jesus performs this miracle, she gives this particular instruction, whatsoever he says, you do it. I'm waiting for that to sink in as usual. Every woman, every mother of a child ought to give these words of instruction to their boy or girl child. Whatsoever he tells you in his word, do it. Do it. And at point number four, you're going to find this in Matthew chapter 12. The verse is 50. Here's the other interesting thing that you find here. Uh, Jesus is out there now. His uh, ministry is fully fledged. And uh, his mother, brother and sister uh, come through and they are looking for Jesus. He is informed that your family members are looking for you outside. And Jesus responds in an unusual way. He says, unto me, my mother, brother and sister are those who do the will of God. Now let us leave the theology out and go back into family dynamics. You may have a professional space where you operate as a CEO, an MD, a president, a, a, a directing manager, whatever role you, you carry out. Remember this, as far as your family is concerned, you will still be their son, you will be their brother, you will you, be a sister to them. Those things do not change. Our family members relate to us as who we are, not because of the professions that we have walked into. And I love this about Mary. She still goes out to associate with her son. You know, there are some relatives who are not proud to even associate with their children or with their siblings in the spaces where they are. And I want to encourage you, as you go out and relate to them, also receive your relatives when they come through. Take them into your office. Have them sit in that corner office and, and, and feel that they have arrived where their son or their daughter works each and every day. Of course, they're not going to visit every day, but I'm saying whenever they come, make it worth their while. You are blessed among women. And I want to recap on the four blessings so far that I want us to look at. Number one, you are blessed when you conceive. Number two, you are blessed when you are married. You are blessed, thirdly, when you believe in your children. And number four, you are blessed when you are visited by your family and they identify with you in your professional spaces. It can get lonely in the offices. You need those people who are going to relate to you as who you are and see you for who you are. And lastly, there is a blessing that Mary may have received. And this one was in John 19 verse 25. She is the one who was there next to the cross of Christ and saw his exit, saw his final stages. She was there to see it for herself. But I do not wish this blessing upon you in respect of your child. As a woman of faith, may you never lay to rest the child that lay in your womb. This I do not wish upon your life. I wish you prosperity and may your children lay you to rest and give you the dignified burial that you shall deserve. If the Lord is to come before we slip, may the Lord take us home with our children. This is my prayer over your life and over my life. Until we meet again, blessings and peace.